Good evening. God bless you, and welcome to Love Notes, um, the Bible study for Love Church. And uh, we're glad to have you here, as we say at Love Church. We're glad to have you here, and and love loves you. So we really appreciate you joining us here on our Bible study. If you're watching on YouTube or you're here on our, um, <clears throat> our Zoom link, we're glad to have you here, and we're going to uh, go right into the Word uh, immediately uh, following prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this season. God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you break up the fallow ground of the hearts of your people, that the seed of the word of God will go down, take root, and grow up to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth fruit in due season. Lord, anoint us afresh because the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Finally, Father, we ask that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God for you. Once again, welcome to Bible study, and we're going to go right into the text, right into the Word of God. Amen. As you know, we're staying in a, a theme of warfare um, for this time. We're um, talking about spiritual warfare and um, going into this, this idea. We're um, in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, talking about the whole armor of God. So Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 13th through the 14th verse are the verses we're going to be reading today. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of, right, breastplate of righteousness. Excuse me. And so what we're going to focus on is the part that says, stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Once again, stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Amen. And the title of our lesson is The Truth. The truth is an important thing. It's an important thing as a believer. It's an important thing to be honest, to tell the truth, to have honesty be a part of your nature, who you are, how people define you as a child of God. It's important to uh, um, uh, show, show things honest before all men, as, as Scripture says. So my question today is, how important is the truth to you? How is it important in your day-to-day -day walk? Uh, um, sometimes there's a temptation in this world to cut corners, to tell little white lies, to give half-truths. Glory be to God. Well, how is important is it? Um, is honesty, how important is the truth in our Christian walk? Well, Jesus said in St. John, the 14th chapter, and the 6th verse, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If Jesus describes himself as the truth, if Jesus describes the truth as being integral to his person, to his being, then how important should truth be to us calling ourselves Christian or Christ-like, calling ourselves believers? Glory be to God. How important should the truth be? Well, if you look here at the text, the, the, the scripture in um. Ephesians, excuse me, uh, that sixth chapter, the 14th verse, it says your loins gird about with truth. And when it's talking about your loins gird about with truth, it's basically talking about wearing the belt of truth around your waist, the belt of truth around your midsection. And so I don't know about you, but a belt can be extremely important depending on the garment you wear. And so I believe, I, I believe the best way to look at this illustration is to look at truth just like you would as the belt that you would have around a robe. You know, uh, sometimes you get those robes and it has that um, that cloth belt that you wrap around and you tie. You think about biblical times, a lot of them wore robes and similar items or, you know, um, uh, uh, different uh, types of, 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 of robes and shawls. And a lot of times what they used to tie that, whether it was a rope or a cloth of some uh, of some sort, whatever they used to tie those clothes together was extremely important. Why? The truth, glory be to God, uh, um, protected them from being exposed. What are you saying, Pastor? So if I'm telling the truth, if I'm an honest person, if I, if I uh, provide things honest before all men and I strive and I do my best to tell people what is true and what is the truth and what is true by the word of God and what is true by, by the things that I say and I do, if I, live to, uh, if I strive to live an honest life, then I don't. I don't risk myself to exposure. Think about that. I don't run the risk of myself being exposed. How many times have lies, glory be to God, and dishonesty, um, shadiness, led someone to be exposed? 
I don't want to be that. I don't want to live that life. It's the same thing with hypocrisy. Hypocrisy being a form of dishonesty. I don't want to live a hypocritical life because I risk the chance of being exposed. Um, it, it's the, the, the uh, uh, truth covers you. Truth covers you. It protects you from shame. Um, during those times to uh, expose one's nakedness, we can look um, at the story of Noah. Who, when Noah, when he got drunk, he um, stripped his clothes and he was running around naked, and and his sons laughed at him because of the sh his son laughed at him because of the shame that the, the shame that he he carried by being naked. It's the same way. The nakedness in that particular scripture represents shame. So we don't want to be shamed. Glory be to God. The truth protects us from shame. It goes right back to that honesty thing, that exposure thing, that exposure that, you know, that we're shamed because we're not honest. We're shamed because we haven't been telling the truth. We're shamed because of things that we've been trying to hide from people instead of being open and honest and clear with other individuals about who we are and what we represent. So I'm here to tell you as much as possible, be honest. Now, you said just said, Pastor, what do you mean as much as possible? Well, let me rephrase that. Um, as much as possible, as much as possible, live a transparent life. Now, now, when I, the reason why I say as much as possible is because there are some things you don't have to tell everybody. I don't have to give you my social security number. I don't have to give you the PIN number to my bank account. You might not find a lot in there, but that doesn't mean I have to give you the PIN number. <laughs> Glory be to God. And, and I don't have to give you that. I don't have to give you that because that has nothing to do with our relationship. And it and also, it is not something that I'm lying about, but I am allowed to keep confidence on some things. It's the same way with your relationships with others. Um, the conversations I have with my wife, I keep confidential, glory be to God. I don't have to give them out to you. I can protect those things in my relationship. That has nothing to do with honesty, glory be to God. Telling uh, And actually telling your wife's business is more to do with foolishness <laughs> and, and, and a lack of wisdom than it does with being honest. Honesty, glory be to God, honesty is giving the truth, giving the truth, Glory be to God and telling the truth and not conjuring lies, not making things up, not um, starting rumors or, or um, um, instigating discussions to uh, tear someone else's reputation down on things, whether you know them to be true or whether you think them to be true, but don't have the evidence. That is lying. That is dishonesty. Keeping confidence is not. You know, sometimes you uh, somebody wants your business. They listen. I, I can't tell you that. They ask for your social security number. You know what? I, I can't give you that. There's nothing wrong with keeping cop keeping confidence. But sin comes in when we tell a lie. Sin comes in when we're dishonest. We expose ourselves and we open ourselves up to shame when we're dishonest. That is why we have to be gird about our loins, our section, our midsection. We have to be gird about with truth. Even our battle in our battle with the enemy. Glory be to God. We talk about armor, the whole armor of God. Notice the first thing he talks about is just that basic covering. You know, um, a lot of times um, in the, um, in wars, if you look what a lot of soldiers die from, it's, um, a lot of times it's, um, in, in the history of war, um, many times it's not so much the attacks from their enemies, whoever they may be. A lot of times it's not, you know, sort of... Um, uh, getting killed by their adversary. A lot of times in war, people die from um, hunger, exposure, and disease. So, you know, uh, the last two, exposure and disease, being covered up can protect from that, can protect you from that. So protect yourself from the infection of the enemy by being honest, by being truthful. Glory be to God and having your loins girt about with truth. Glory be to God. We thank God for you. We thank God for you joining us to study about spiritual warfare. I pray that this was a blessing to you. Now, if you notice, I gave you that scripture about Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life, that no man comes to the Father but by him. When it says no man, it talks about no person. No one can come to God except through Jesus. That's what Jesus said himself. I didn't say it. Jesus said it himself. He said in uh, John, the 14th chapter and 6th verse, Jesus saith unto him, I am am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus is the way. If you're not saved today, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, I'm here to tell you, you want to get to God, then you need to have a relationship 
Glory be to God by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. By accepting Jesus, glory be to God, the one who shed his blood for you, accepting him, glory be to God, as your representative to God. If you are willing to give your life to Christ, if you're willing, hallelujah, to surrender to the Lord and you want to be saved, if you're ready to repent, that means to turn 180 degrees. I was going this direction with my sin and my wrongdoing and my disobedience, and now I'm ready to turn completely around and chase after God and to seek the Lord and, and to live a new life in Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. If you're ready for that life, I'm going to ask that you pray with me. If you um, um, uh, 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 gave your life to the Lord before and you backslid, and you want to rededicate your life, I'm just going to ask you to pray with me. Pray this prayer with me and restore or begin your relationship with the Lord. Just repeat after me. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I've done wrong. I messed up. I've sinned. Forgive me, Lord. I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you that today I'm saved. I've messed up. I've done wrong. Forgive me, Lord. Save me, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that today I'm saved. Lord, send me your Holy Ghost. Lord, send me your Holy Spirit that will teach me all things. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer with me today, you are new, you are free, you are a new creature in Jesus. Now, what I'm going to tell you right now, what you have to do is find a church home, a body of believers. Come join us here at Love Church. Um, you can join virtually, and we have service every Sunday at 930. Um, every Sunday, 930 service. If you would like to join us physically, you come to services at 300. Pine Street, Stoughton, Pennsylvania, 17113. Once again, 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning, 300 Pine Street, Stoughton, Pennsylvania, 17113. We'll be glad to have you. Amen. And I just want to tell you that we're excited about what God is doing, and we're excited about what God is doing with you. God bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you, and so do we. Hallelujah. Love loves you. Amen.